So the person who should rightly be introduced in Marlon is the acting head of the department, Dr. Norval Edwards, who is unavoidably absent. And so he has asked me to deputize for him. <laughs> Remember now, he's the one who's deputizing for me while I leave. So in a curious and convoluted way, while I'm ostensibly speaking on behalf of Dr. Edwards, I'm in fact speaking for myself. and representing the Department of Literature and English as one of the collaborators of this event. Quote, a potentially bright student who is still very young, and he underlined very, and unsure of himself, he should improve with time and experience, unquote. And by his second year, Professor Ball's assessment was this, quote, a very interesting student, and I noted he did not underline interesting, <laughs> alert and original under his reticent exterior, but does not seem to attend consistently, <laughs> unquote. His records revealed that his highest grade over the three years was in the course Creative Writing 301, which he took with John Hearn. My second recollection of Marlon was during the early years of the Calabash Literary Festival. He was a staunch supporter of this literary party, and almost every year in Treasure Beach, we would nod to each other as we passed under the tent. And one year, no doubt, no doubt both my family and himself booked accommodations too late, and we were forced to stay in a guest house all the way in Black River. Fast forward to early 2006. I'm at a dinner party, most likely Victor Chan's famous Chinese New Year party, and in the chit-chat mingling session before dinner, Kim Robinson Walcott, editor of Caribbean Quarterly and Jamaica Journal, saunters over to me and said, Michael, have you read Marlon James' John Crow's Devil? And she went on to an effusive promotion of the book. On January 28, 2006, the Jamaica Observer had reported that this novel had been shortlisted for the Commonwealth Writers First Book Award. And soon, I had bought a copy, and, I, and that began a treacherous love-hate relationship with this work. I say love-hate because I could not put the book down once I started reading, even though I was cringing with horror at all the dastardly dark deeds that found their way into his imagination. <laughs> I was so taken with the novel that at the 2000 and, uh, 2007 West Indian Literature Conference, I presented a scholarly paper on the book entitled Horizons of Desire, Imagining Alternative Worlds in Speculative Fiction. Not only was scholarly work being done on his book, but Dr. Norval Edwards, that same one who has not um, turned up for this event, <laughs> had placed the novel on the West Indian literature course as early as 2006, thereby exposing our students to the work of this young talent. That debut novel that exposed his prodigious talent was a New York Times editor's choice and was shortlisted for the prestigious Commonwealth Writers' Prize and the Los Angeles Times Book Prize. This is what one of the great architects of the Calabash Festival said of the book. Quote, John Crow's Devil is a kind of stylistically mature first novel that often comes at the beginning of an enduring career. The year after this first novel was published, Marlon completed a master's in creative writing from Wilkes University and in 2007 joined the staff of the English department of McAllister College. His second book, I eagerly awaited, and he took his time. And when it arrived, it was also an accomplished work of art, brooding, and at the same time lyrical in its meditation on slavery. I read the book of Night Women in three nights after working all day in the archives at McMaster University, and promptly started recommending it to friends and colleagues. The second novel won the 2010 Dayton Literary Peace Prize, the Minnesota Book Award, and was a finalist for the 2010 National Book Critics Circle Award in Fiction, and an NAACP Image Award. Marlon was also the Go On Girl Book Club's Author of the Year. 
In his third novel, A Brief History of Seven Killings, which most of you have heard about. <laughs> James presents the untold history of Jamaica in the, light, in the late 1970s, of the assassination attempt on Bob Marley and the country's own clandestine battles of the Cold War, and that's a quote. One critic describes the book this way. It's purposeful and skillfully handled by an author who's equally at home in regular lyrics as Shakespearean style soliloquy, but is also purposefully ostracizing, vile, and terrifying. It is this book that has catapulted, catapulted him into stardom and into this vaulted position as the lecturer on this very celebrated occasion to deliver the Bob Marley lecture. Whatever else is revealed about Bob Marley and the Man Booker Prize winner tonight, one thing we know is that one international artist has inspired another. And although he was already a well-prized author, this third novel was the biggie, winning for him the Minnesota Book Award for Fiction, the Anisfield Wolf Fiction Prize, the OCM Bocas Fiction Prize for Caribbean Literature, and the Man Booker Prize 2015. In all three works, James ventures into territory that makes us uncomfortable, into the nether regions of our dark psyche as a people, and reveals us complexly to ourselves. What emerges from his creative heart of darkness is a writer of daring and distinction. He's never shy to go where angels fear to tread, or in the words of Frost, to tread on literary leaves no step had trodden black. Though we know that there is, there is still an uneven world of valuation and acclaim, I take great comfort in the fact that he was recognized a yard long before he was recognized abroad. And from his Udabai recognition in John Hearn's creative writing class, his Calabash induction, the Institute of Jamaica's award of a Silver Musgrave Medal to the Man Booker Prize, Marlon James has emblazoned the parts of literary endeavor and has been a light arising, no, I should say, a lightning striking from the West. <laughs> we welcome this distinguished graduate of the University of the West Indies to deliver the 2016 Bob Marley Lecture, and I hope with a rousing applause. Yeah.